Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this mysterious star that the scientists discovered about a decade ago known as the Outcast Star. And today I wanted to show you how astronomers were able to figure out the history of our own galaxy the Milky Way by just looking at that one particular star. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. If you look around our galaxy and even outside of the galaxy, you'll actually discover there's quite a lot of objects circulating, flying around, buzzing through the galaxy, and even on the outskirts, there's quite a lot of stars. But sometimes the scientists discover a lonely star that doesn't really make any sense. And this is kind of what happened back in 2007 when we discovered this star that is unofficially known as the Outcast. And so this is what the scientists actually saw. They saw the star kind of right there, all by itself, relatively far away from the actual galaxy, the Milky Way. And at a distance of about 250,000 or just around there, light years away from Earth. Now that's actually pretty far. It's basically kind of like putting it into the um, intergalactic space. And uh, at first they didn't really think much of it, but then they realized this star is actually really, really bright. As a matter of fact, this was a B-type star, a very kind of a new star and very young. How can a young, bright star form in the middle of nowhere in between galaxies? And so they started to kind of observe it a little bit more. And what they discovered was, well, in some way um, groundbreaking, but also kind of obvious. This star escaped from the Milky Way galaxy and it was moving at a speed of about 709 kilometers per second. It's one of the fastest stars we've discovered so far. And as you can imagine, it was actually moving away from the Sagittarius A star and also away from our galaxy. I'm going to try to see if I can demonstrate this here, although it's relatively difficult to see without making this really, really slow. So here we go. It's kind of slowly moving away from the galaxy. Now, why is this important and why is this actually interesting? Well, first of all, because it's a young star, it had to form somewhere where young stars form, basically a star nursery. But there are no star nurseries in this region. Because it was moving fast and it was coming from sort of direction of the center of the galaxy, it most likely was formed somewhere near there. So this probably meant that it came from here, from the center. Now, how can it achieve such a high velocity? And this is what at first stumbled the scientists, but then they realized, well, it most likely actually got slingshot out of the galaxy by most likely the supermassive black hole right in the middle, essentially the Sagittarius A star black hole that's right there in the middle of everything uh, right at the center of our galaxy. And so w we think today that this is most likely how this particular star got its velocity. But it doesn't necessarily explain just yet um, how it actually was created and what caused it to be slingshot out of this particular region. And so after many years of analysis and basically interpretation of various results, the scientists actually discovered not just how the star was um, slingshot out of the system, but also that um, at the time of the creation of the star, it's very likely that many, many new stars were formed in the same region. So in other words, they actually discovered a little bit more about the center of our galaxy that they didn't really know before. So first of all, because this was a relatively brand new star, it was only about 300 million years old, um, and also because it probably took it about 100 million years to get to this location from the center, it suggested that um, pretty much almost after its creation, something happened to it and it got kicked out. It also needs a partner. In other words, this um, kind of needs to be a binary system where two stars orbit around one another and then one of them actually gets swallowed by the black hole while the other escapes. Um, and because it already had quite a lot of velocity before the escape, 
Um, it essentially gives the outcast star that's going to escape relatively soon such a huge boost of velocity that it slingshots out of this region of space at um, just a fraction of uh, the speed of light. So it basically lost its partner while acquiring a tremendous, tremendous velocity um, as a result. And this, in effect, led it to being kicked out of the galaxy and thus began its adventure across the universe. Now, it may not actually have that partner, but it does make a lot more sense uh, from the sort of slingshot maneuver perspective if there was something else that it was orbiting. And at the same time, this also suggests that it's very likely that this was not the only star in that region. So there were probably a lot of these young stars in the region that um, either got swallowed by the black hole or basically got shredded by it and thus created a tremendous amount of material that was used by the black hole to um, essentially create not just the uh, accretion disk, but also huge relativistic jets that were probably visible from, well, a lot of places in the universe. So in other words, uh, this probably led to our galaxy becoming what's known as um, radioactive galaxy, the so-called quasar. Now, um, at the same time, this also implies that there were quite a lot of these bright new stars formed uh, very, very close to the central region of the black hole. And uh, it also implies that there was a star nursery in that region. So in other words, just by looking at this lonely outcast star that was kicked out of our galaxy um, about 100 million years ago, the scientists, by analyzing its age, by analyzing its speed, were able to predict what may have happened very likely uh, happened around the supermassive black hole around the center of our galaxy about 100 million years ago. And to me, this is actually fascinating how just by looking at this tiny star that I guess many of us may have seen before in the night skies, they were able to predict all this to um, essentially analyze it to such a uh, detail that they were uh, able to understand the history of the creation of our galaxy. And um, this does have other implications, like for example, we now understand a little bit more about how galaxies change over time and how they can become um, active or inactive pretty much at any point. But what we still don't understand is why is that that these stars were even created to begin with and uh, what caused this sudden um, explosion of new stars being formed around 100 million to 300 million years ago. And on the other hand, this also um, essentially created this new type of star that we um, have now discovered about 20 of them, known as hypervelocity stars. And very, very recently, the 3D analysis of the nearby region of our galaxy uh, basically suggested that of all of the hypervelocity stars we discovered, basically stars that are moving really fast, way faster than they should be moving, a vast majority of them is actually entering our galaxy, not exiting it. In other words, um, these stars were probably kicked out in a very similar fashion from their galaxies and are now entering the Milky Way. And so we can actually study these stars to try to discover what's actually happening in those galaxies super, super far away from us. And um, in some sense, this is actually a brilliant discovery, but in some other sense, it also kind of makes you realize how galaxies actually exchange stars at all times. And and this also may imply that if some of those stars have life around them, this is how galaxies can exchange um, life. Well, that's of course a speculation for now. Because all we really know about these hypervelocity stars is that um, they do have different mechanisms of being kicked out of their proper galaxies, and also that they do have quite a lot of questions they'll be able to answer in the next few decades. Until then, though, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I wanted to talk a little bit more about this outcast star that's not really that well known, and it's all by itself out there in between galaxies. As of now, it's actually not really moving into the direction of any nearby galaxy, so it's literally flying into the intergalactic space, into the abyss of nothingness. And that's kind of where we had it right now as well. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you still haven't and maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it does help me a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye.